Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, we're back on that 311 cubic inch small block Chevy Ripper that's going to go in my dragster. In the last video, what did we do? Well, we assembled the pistons and the connecting rods, got all that set up, showed you some tips and tricks how to do it right the first time. And in this video, what we're going to do is we are going to check the ring gap on this, get them installed with the orientation correct. Tell you what, guys, a lot of rings nowadays, they're already filed to fit. But however, you need to make sure per your application that the ring gap is correct. Ring gap plays a lot of factor, not only into if you have, let's just say, a street engine, a race engine, what type of fuel you're using or if you're using any power adders. With that, let's go take a look at what we got going on. All right, so we got all of our pistons lined up. We got it one through eight all ready to go right well not necessarily piston rings well let's talk about piston rings so these are a hastings molly ring um if you notice they're already 60 over um i just don't trust that these are going to absolutely fit the first time you need to look at your application um, these do come with your separate top rings your second rings and your oil rings but what it also comes with well, it comes with paperwork and we need to talk about ring gap factor. So if you look on here, it talks about that. Basically in a nutshell, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bore of your cylinder and you're gonna times it by the gap factor for your top ring and your second ring. However, what you wanna make sure of, if you look here, it talks about a cast or forged piston or hypertectic. In my case, these are a forged piston. So we're gonna look at these numbers here. So what we need to really make sure that we get here is you look at the application, street, street strip, circle track drag, forced induction, forced induction over 15 pounds, nitrous and nitrous. So it's over up to 200, over 200. So there is your different applications. Now this engine, it's gonna be drag race. I'm setting it up a little loose. It's gonna be naturally aspirated. So I'm gonna go with circle track drag. And if you look here, your minimum clearance on that, well, it talks about five thousandths. Over here, you're looking at your second ring, talking about five and a half thousandths. Now, that is your minimum clearance. You don't want to go too much, but in this case of this engine, it's going to see some RPMs, it's going to see some heat. So I'm going to target a range for the top anywhere between 21 and 24 thousandths. And on the bottom, I'm going to try to go between 23 and 26 thousandths. So... What I did was, is I figured out my gap factor. So I, what I did is I wrote this all down and top ring, I need to take five thousandths per the circle track drag times my bore, which is 4065, which gets me a target goal of 21 thousandths. Second ring, five and a half thousandths times my bore of 4065 target is around 23 thousandths minimum. And you're awfully wondering why, well, why am I saying 4065? I thought this was a 60 thousandths over engine. Well, you're right, it is. However, this is a drag engine and we built in just a little bit extra piston to wall clearance, seeing this isn't a street car, to handle the stress, abuse, and heat of what we're gonna throw at it. So yeah, that is your factors right there. And if you notice, I got it all set up right here. And now we just need to start fitting rings. This paperwork is crucial. If you notice here, it talks about orientation. We're going to get into that later. What we need to do now is we need to start measuring our piston rings. All right, guys, real quick. On a piston ring, now this is the top ring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go top, second, and then oil. But if you notice on here, you're going to see where it says top that faces up. That doesn't mean it's the top ring. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to put this, I'm going to start off with cylinder one, three, five, seven. I'm going to do one cylinder at a time on all the rings and go to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the cylinder. And what you need to do is you need to square it up. You can use all kinds of different methods on that. I have actually have this squaring tool that is adjustable. I had this one pre-fit to fit this small block Chevy. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this thing down and you're gonna push that flat. And then you're gonna go and you're gonna make sure everything is square with the world, especially where the gap is. Just like that. 
Good to go. Now that thing is square in the cylinder bore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a feeler gauge and I'm going to start off with my target goal that we talked about, which was 21 thousandths. So I'm going to take that in there on that gap in there. I'm going to measure it and it's a little bit loose. So I'm going to keep working my way up until I hit a target goal in there. I'm going to jump just a couple and go up to 24. You don't want it to bind. You want it to be snug, but not loose. Keep working until you find it. Right there. So my top ring came in at 24 thousandths. All right, so when I'm done with that ring measuring, since it's the top ring, I'm going to go ahead, and this was cylinder number one. I'm going to put it in with connecting rod and piston number one and lay it in place like that. So real quick, guys, I'm going to go through and measure all these. Um, but if your ring gap factor was too small, you're going to have to file it. I do have a ring filer, and I'll show you that to you here in a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, and I'm going to measure on ring number two. But first, what I need to do is I need to write down my measurement. I'm gonna do the exact same thing in cylinder number one. I'm gonna put the ring in there and you wanna orient it correctly. Take my squaring tool, square up the ring. Take my feeler gauge. Now, I've already gone through and already checked this one just for time's sake. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry. There we have it. That one came in right at 26 thousandths. So now the next thing is I'm gonna remove the ring and I'm gonna go put it with connecting rod and piston number one. I'm gonna write down that measurement and I'm gonna measure on here one of the oil rings. Now when I'm looking at the paperwork, it says all pistons, no matter what, the oil rail needs a minimum minimum clearance of 15 thousandths. And you have to be careful with these because they're extremely thin. Take a look at that. You gotta remember too, each piston gets two of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. I'm gonna get that squared up. Like I said, you gotta be super careful because that one's thin. So what you want to check is just to see if it's greater than 15 thousandths. And in that case, we are good. So I'm going to do All right, so I have measured on the top and second ring, recorded my measurements. My oil ring, it specs out at more than 15 thousandths. So you gotta remember, like I said, these have two. So I'm gonna put two of those on there along with 
the actual oil ring itself. So that one is ready to go. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go through and I'm going to start measuring rings for each cylinder, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And every time I do that per cylinder, it's going to go on the connecting rod and piston that it aligns to. All right, guys, well, I have everything lined up per cylinder, per connecting rod, and I knew this was going to happen. Uh, since these were quote unquote pre fit rings, I have a little bit of extra clearance built into my cylinder walls for drag racing and heat and all that abuse that this engine is going to take. Um, the tolerance, the end gap, ring factor, and all that calculated, it came in exactly where I needed it to. Um, in fact, I could go if I wanted to add a power adder like nitrous down the road. So while they're gapped a little bit more than I originally wanted them to, they're going to be just fine for my application. Got to remember, it's a race engine. I'm going to be throwing a lot of heat and abuse, different fuels at this. It's going to be good to go. Now, however, if your rain gap was too small, well, you need to file it. This right here, it's a ring gap filer, uh, pretty inexpe inexpensive. Uh, they make electric version ones of these. However, you know what, for the money and how easy they are, you know what, guys, this is the one I would recommend. You can go out to any website that sells auto parts and you're going to be able to find one. It's real simple. What you want to do is you're going to put this in here like this and you're going to crank this. What happens is, is that's a little abrasive wheel and it files that edge. But what you want to do is you just want to do a little bit at a time and then go remeasure. So you got to remember, you can always remove metal. You just can't add it. Now, with that, guys, what we're going to go do is we're going to talk about ring orientation as it correlates to the piston. So I got that one in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to get that gap back where it needs to be. Right there. And now what I need to do, it talks about the top oil ring end gap right there. So it's going to be right here. So basically your expander ring gap's got to be somewhere in here and the other two are split right here. So I'm going to take my other one and I'm going to get that oriented. These are really thin, so they're kind of tricky. Not terrible, but they are definitely not the easiest in the world. Get that in there. All right, well, there we go. So I have the oil ring now suited on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to the next ring on that, which is the second ring. So here we go. The second ring, it's talking about second ring end gap is right here and you're going to have your top ring end gap right here so we're going to start with the second one which is this one and mind you it does have an orientation it says top right there that doesn't mean top ring that means it's facing towards the top i need to put that right there Like I said, you want to be super careful with these. You don't want to break them. Although a, a broken piston ring is awesome for cleaning used pistons, getting the carbon out. I can tell you that much. If you hear that wind out there, it is crazy storms right now. Some piston rings are a little bit more forgiving than others. I'll just say that. Sometimes it's handy to have a pick with you to get in there. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that floats around there freely. Get your orientation in there correct. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the top ring. Same thing, orientation to the top. It's calling for it per the sheet. Top ring right there. Here we go. Make sure that moves around correctly. Here you have it. Now all I got to do is do that to the rest of those pistons. So when you're done with it, basically what you're going to see is you're going to see on the second ring along here, not with the wrist pin center line, but along the skirt, like going straight down here, look in front of the engine that way, you're going to see the bottom ring end gap. And then on the other side, you're going to have your top ring end gap. And then back here is where your oil rings are split on those gaps. And then on the front, your expander, that's where that comes together. Just want to make sure that all comes together. It's got nice motion in it. doesn't hang up anywhere. And you're good to go. So now I only need to do that for seven more. Let's get working. All right, got them all done. That's kind of a little time consuming task. Kind of, you know, those rings, they don't bend a whole lot. You got to be careful. So you just got to take your time. So these are all ready to go. So in a gist of what this video was about, it was talking about the uh, ring gap, uh, end gap on that. And you need to make sure you follow your paperwork. It's simple. You find your gap factor per your application, take it times your bore, and that's it there. Like I said, if you need to remove material, well, you use one of these bad boys. When you get all that done, well, you need to follow your orientation on that. Now, when I go to install these, what I'll end up doing is I'll check that orientation again prior to installing these. But in the next video, what we're going to do, we're going to take these eight bad boys and we're going to put them in that 311 cubic inch small box Chevy Ripper. Two-axe garage. See you in the next one.